circuits and today is November 16, 2020. So previously we were studying memory circuits in which we have studied the architecture. We also studied SRAM, DRAM, TCAM, some, some sort of ROM also we studied, right? So <coughs> we know that this is static, this is dynamic, this is for, so we studied actually CAM and one of the example was TCAM where it was searching not only for zero or one, but it was searching also for don't care condition also, right? So it can search three different uh, numbers, zero, one and uh, X or the don't care. So that's how like it's a ternary cam. So we studied all these things. So next uh, understanding of NVM, notably like we also studied uh, some of the <coughs> serial resistors also or you can say the serial memories okay like FIFO, LIFO and serial in parallel out parallel in serial out and other things like that also we studied and also we studied Q so now the next topic of understanding is actually the NVM or it's commonly known as non-volatile memory it's also like it's, it's a flash right notably like uh, the NAND is one of the popular structure for this one and it's NAND flash memory is used but uh, before going all these things I uh, assume that you know a bit about uh, device understanding like if you look at uh, the structure of a transistor which looks like this one so I'm not writing all this N plus and P and all these things but here some silicon substrate is there and you must have studied this one right and uh, what are the things uh, and how it works I, I believe that you understand at the device level and you also know the band bending diagram like uh, if you know the can take a new page you might be knowing about the p type and n type structures where this is conduction and this is valence band energy notably like x axis is the distance this distance with respect to the energy so energy in conduction band and in this one so if it is p type or if it is n type so p type has lots of holes are there right where uh, other electrons can occupy the, the place so in that case the fermi potential has to be lower that is something called intrinsic energy level right and same for true for here but n type has lots of electron which can make a movement so fermi potential has to be near to the conduction band right if you connect both of them so you should understand that fermi potential is not going here and there in that case fermi potential remains at the same place other can be changing so when you are adjusting this from here to here there is a smooth curve so this is pn right so now <coughs> if you want want to have the uh, the current to flow you need to apply here electric field so that movement is possible right so this is the theory of uh, uh, whatever things you have studied right and um, this particular potential is known as the built-in uh, potential and that is how like that 0.7 volt is coming from right 
and uh, as you are applying more potential then uh, this vbi this is, there is a possibility to have the the flow of electrons from uh, one one side to another side and that is how like uh, maybe as you are applying the electric field here positively these things entirely coming down right and that's how like uh, there is a conduction from one to another side <laughs> okay but note that this is a distance and this side is availability of the energy in terms of uh, electrons which can move from one place to another place right so with that knowledge let's start a bit on uh, other things as i told you that it's not only a simple transistor but there is <coughs> another transistor which is known as floating gate transistor let's name it as fg transistor and it look like as follows i am not writing about the doping concentration and all these things but it look like this i am calling this first part as control gate which is usual which is the case for mosfet and we are going to call the part which is here as a floating gate of course uh, other things will be as it is this is a drain let's call it source this is a drain this is a gate and this is a body right so this is similar to that just extra floating gate is available here which is not connected to any any other place note that uh, the width of the control gate is much thicker than the width of uh, the floating gate right <coughs> so let's call this one as t0 and this one as t1 then t0 is smaller than t1 there is some advantage of this that's why we are doing this note that floating gate is not connected anywhere right now let's look at the possibility let's look at the possibility when this kind of transistor is there it's as good as a big capacitor there are two plates i can see one at gate side and one at other side right so in that case looking from here to here i am i am not right now assuming that the floating gate is empty there are no charge nothing nothing is there so in that case as much positive i am keeping here as per the theory of a uh, mosfet like it creates a channel and uh, this is this channel has mobile electrons and these are the immobile fatty electrons which does not go here and there right in the in this region of uh, operation right so it's in saturation we are calling it but i am talking about the point where this number of uh, like positive side is uh, exactly equal to the negative side so in that case this point is decided as a threshold voltage in mosfet so mosfet uh, defines the threshold with the fact that <coughs> first of all when you start actually as many number of positive you are giving here so some fatty immobile electrons will be available at the other side and there are two different plates are there 
let's call this area as channel area and this area is your body or the bulk area where bulk first generate lots of electrons and then when there is start of channel from one to another end basically like uh, this is also i am not drawing the exact one as device people are drawing because it's a trapezoidal uh, approximation and you can have channel from one end to another end right between source and drain and then there is a flow of the electrons and uh, accordingly you will have the current so <clears throat> the point when this particular the first electron seen in this channel is going to decide vg versus ids so this first point is actually known as the threshold voltage note that i am not drawing the exact one which is looking like this one exponential one right so if it is approximated one then vd will be this one but what if the floating gate also have some some sort of electrons right so in that case what is going to happen this gate requires more current sorry more uh, electrons to make this in a, in a conducting mode or you can say that threshold voltage will be higher in this case when the floating gate has some 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 sort of electrons and uh, it's not empty in that case this vt is going to be like this is you can call it low vt operation and this is high vt operation we are doing with the fact that floating gate is fully uh, like availability of uh, electrons are there and if you look at this delta vt is going to be equal to qfg divided by the capacitance at uh, that particular node so qfg is the floating gate charge and divide by the the capacitance now let's uh, understand what is these uh, capacitance and other things so let's understand the first thing which is parasitic capacitances right so let's draw one more time what we have drawn and i'm very sure that my students know about the parasitics till now they are expert of parasitics okay i'm not drawing n plus and all so <coughs> this is source this is drain and this side is control gate and this side is a floating gate this is drain and this is another side is source and this side is body so as we know like parasitic capacitances are present when there are two different uh, potentials or dissimilar plates are there and it's working at high frequency so let's assume that you are working at high frequency <coughs> and you are looking at every node with respect to the floating gate so with respect to the floating gate we can understand that there is one capacitor here let's call this one as cs with the name it is source another capacitance is with respect to drain which is cd and uh, <coughs> other side let's call it cb and this side we can call it cc or the control voltage or the control capacitance right between control gate and floating gate the potential available at each of the terminal let's define them as vg vs vd and vb now if i want to and of course uh, this side the charge available in floating gate is qfg and the available voltage is vfg note that this vfg is not applied voltage but it's derived from the gate now if you want to know that what is the value of this particular fg 
then we can write down the equation for this one qfg now what is qfg is qfg is equal to it's by the way uh, cv is the is a charge so let's start from this point so the charge available on this capacitor is going to be equal to vfg minus vg times cc plus vfg minus let's uh, assume that vs equal to zero body equal to zero so that the calculations are very easy right and that will be the the real case also so vfg times cs plus vfg times vfg times cv plus vfg minus vd times cd so therefore you can write down qfg is equal to nothing but vfg times cc cs cv and cd okay and other than that it's minus vg times cc <coughs> minus vd times cd so vfg is nothing but qfg divided by the whole capacitance this value i am going to call it ct the total capacitance plus vg times cc plus cc divided by ct plus vd times cd divided by ct right it's very easy but still i want to make it little bit easier equation than what i have written what i can write down vfg is equal to vg times cc divided by ct plus qfg divided by ct when vd equal to also zero right so if drain source and everything is zero then you can take from the gate you can have this equation notably when you are starting with the operation of nvm flash memory which is going to use the floating gate transistor the qfg will also become become zero at time t equal to zero however as time is progressing this qfg does not remain at zero it's going to be increasing right now one more thing cc by ct we are going to call it as gcr gcr is nothing but gate capacitance ratio and that will decide how much voltage will be available here generally uh, for different technologies uh, this number varies but uh, note that such kind of nvm flash memories or this nvm which has floating gates this is separate technology which allows you to have this memory so generally like uh, in industry like uh, st microelectronics they are using bcd transistors which is having the bi cmos dmos transistors so dmos is like a laterally diffused mos transistor so which is used for high voltage application note that this high voltage is very high value by the way you can go even for 100 volts so these transistors even though they are in 180 nanometer or maybe 130 nanometer or like this is the right now uh, people are working on like is, these are not at 7 nanometer or or something like uh, 20 one nanometer it's at the bigger technology nodes like this one maybe 65 nanometer maybe so in these technologies node they are having not only the regular transistors it also have low vt devices high vt devices sometimes they are calling <coughs> high performance uh, devices and you might have 
this floating gate also. <coughs> So this floating gate transistor allows you to work at very high voltage like everyone will have different requirement of the voltages and in this case when we want to use it as NVM flash memory to program areas or retention or reading all these things depending on the fact that you are going to operate it at very high high voltage generally like um, <coughs> this one 180 nanometer that can work like for the VCD ST technology as per my knowledge it's around, uh, you know, it can go around 75 volts or something like that. You can uh, read about, uh, read its DRM. And uh, other technologies are also available for such kind of things like XFAB is there. And uh, other technologies are also there, which are allowing you to, to go for higher voltages to make the memory. Like uh, even Tower Jazz is also allowing such technology where the, even though you are at 180 nanometer or 130 nanometer, the supply voltage is much beyond just 1.2, 1.8 volt, it's going to be uh, around in the range of 15 volt, 20 volt, you can apply, no problem. So I'm talking about that technology, which is going to have gate voltage is not just 1.2 volt or 1.8 volt, even though <coughs> it's at 180 nanometer, for having this floating gate as interme intermediate uh, 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 region over here actually whatever the gate you are going to apply here some part of the value will be here it's not the complete one and it's depending on the gate capacitance ratio so that's between cc by ct so if you are starting the the nvm function at the zero time this second quantity is going to be zero right and the first quantity which is vg times cc by ct so that will decide what is the floating gate voltage is available over there so if you assume that i am applying here 15 volt and gate capacitance ratio is around 0.6 and uh, <coughs> if i am looking at here so vfg is nothing but 9 volt right so because of these numbers VFG will be 9 volt over here and uh, because of the available voltage over here it might not make sense for uh, uh, you know program the memory as we want. So let's start with that how we are doing that but the most important part was this one that and let's write it down with the golden fonts that VFG is nothing but VG times ground capacitance ratio plus QFG divided by CT, right? Hmm. Let's keep it somewhere with the note that we are going to use it, right? And this is wherever you feel that you forgot it, you can just look at this uh, parasitic model and you can write down this equation and you can have it anytime. Now, next important part where we are going to use the understanding of what we have studied is the tunneling. Mostly all MTECs are here, right? Have you studied tunneling or no in your device course? Srikant, they are here or not? No, sir. Have you studied tunneling? Yes, sir. Yes or no? Because no, sir. No, sir. okay, but you know band bending diagram and other things, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, so uh, let's uh, understand what is happening. So if you look at mm, even I made anywhere okay if you look at from here and if you make this cross section of this one and then if you draw the bending diagrams this is gate then polysilicon right 
and then we have the silicon so if it is p type n type whatever is that you have to make the the diagram which we made already here if it is p type Fermi potential will be here and this will be the conduction this will be the valence and this will be the middle one will be the intrinsic one right so this is the way to draw it with the uh, metal work function and other things you need to consider just for all these derivation and other things but i'm not going into detail for that i'm interested in the fact that you know what is happening with the available voltages so in the case of floating gate if i make cut over here and then i'm drawing this like by rotating this this side so in that case first gate will be there then this gate then this uh, this particular area then floating gate then this particular area and then rest of the things this is by the way the silicon so if it is p type or n type depending on that you are going to draw that so let's draw that thing so first thing is gate then the second by the way okay before going to the floating gate it's better to go with the mosfet so if this is the gate and this is your silicon it might be anything like p type or n type right so i'm not drawing in between anything so if vg equal to zero nothing will happen right look with respect to the distance and energy because the the movement of energy going from one place to another place for a given distance it's depending on the fact that there has to be some current or available electric field right now vg is equal to zero so there is nothing what if we are <coughs> doing with the positive energy or the positive voltage applied at gate so in that case when you are applying the positive voltage over here following things will happen as you know earlier it was like this now depending on how much voltage you are applying accordingly this energy level will go down right so if you are applying very high voltage let's say earlier this was vg over here now you are applying here when you are applying this on this application this will change this way right and you will have band like this right in the case of silicon so now there are few things we need to know note that this is oxide layer or silicon dioxide so look at this point where it's bending from here to here sorry from top to top or top to this one this is going to be known as i am writing v o v o x otherwise uh, in device side people are uh, following the greek letter psi and phi and other things so for better understanding like uh, you can you can choose anyone so right now i am using v ox and from here to here let's call this one as v b something like that right so or maybe capital so in that case if such situation is there when v of x is lesser than vb we are going to call this one as direct tunneling 
by the way it's nothing but a but a pipe where you need to control the where you need to control uh where is it oh. if you look at this this is a the pipe which is actually uh, elbow shape and uh, like you need to make sure that there is a direct connection from one to another side so if there is a point where you can have the proper pipe can see each other and the electron movement is also free then that is known as the tunnel so you have to create a tunnel where easy going of electrons from one side to another side and another way you can say that the holes from one side to another side both will have a different uh, uh, direction and if such thing will happen then it's called as tunnel or the tunneling effect so tunneling effect requires something to understand that look electrons available here has to go through the barrier of this one right so in the case of vox is lesser than vb then such thing will happen if you draw actually the definition says that if you draw this one and if it is making the trapezoidal approximation that is a direct tunnel right and in the case if you are applying much more higher voltage then if have you you have applied here such thing will happen so the application of voltage is very high this is silicon this is gate and this is oxide <coughs> so if you look at on top side there is a triangular approximation and in this case vb is actually much smaller than vox this is a desirable thing because uh, there is a minimum barrier to cross the current from here to here right so there is very small barrier when you are applying vg much higher than the voltage which you are applying for the direct tunneling so this was the direct tunneling and this is known as very popular name is there it's called polar nodding tunneling in simple language they call it fn tunneling by the way okay so the tunneling when uh, it's very high voltage is applied then uh, such thing will happen and there is a band uh, will be band such a way that vox is higher than vb in that case it's a so that's a simple definition of fn tunneling and direct uh, tunneling note that uh, there are two different equations are also available i borrowed from uh, from the device book so and they generally if you understand they we generally writing in terms of the current density so if i am writing the current density <coughs> in the case of direct tunneling it looks like this one so this is the equation for direct tunneling i am not going into detail for how it's derived and all it's derived with the trapezoidal uh, approximation and you can have that if you want but the most important part which i want to show here this is an electric field right and so this one also and vb is already known to us and jdt is direct tunneling uh, current density and k1 is the constant k1 will go to both are the constant so now i can by looking at this i can say that <coughs> if epsilon is increasing which is electric field jdt is going to be increasing moreover if i increase this vb jdt is going to be decreasing that is the case i already taught you right 
that it's depending on VB value. If VB is smaller, it's better in terms of current because this barrier is smaller so that the electrons can uh, like can uh, raise themselves and they can go to the, the uh, next table and uh, there is a current, right? So that is the case and that the case for the current density of polar nodding uh, tunneling, it's equal to K1 epsilon square okay i made a mistake over here. okay no mistake it's exp uh, exponential only okay so it is similar equation but uh, little bit yeah it has to be vb raised to 3 by 2 divided by epsilon so <coughs> in this equation also you can see that as epsilon is increasing jfn is also increasing and as vb is increasing jfn is also decreasing so both the equations are saying the most important part which we need to understand over here is there is absence of temperature What I mean to say that with respect to temperature, the current does not change and if current does not change, the programmed value is not going to change and that is what we wanted because that's the ideal thing in our case. <coughs> so what I want to explain here is if you draw the gate voltage with respect to id and note that this plot is actually the semi-log where y axis is in log and x axis is in linear scale so as vg is increasing right that is what we learn that vg you are progressively increasing from zero to some higher value so at zero or near to zero there is a region where the current is almost zero and there is a region where you are applying very high voltage you can have the fn tunneling and if you apply the moderate value it's direct tunneling so if you draw the the current plot it looks like something like this where if you apply very high voltage beyond like some voltage is required then it's under fn tunneling and fn tunneling is decided by the one fact that v o x is actually greater than v b if v o x is less than v b then you are not in fn tunneling but you are in direct tunneling notably this is not also required in our case we require the fn tunneling so that you can program the value and you can keep it in the under underneath the floating gate And here we are going to program it. And the value where it VG is near to zero or the current is also zero, that value we are going to make it use for the retention. Right? So this is what happening. Now let's uh, draw the band diagram or the position of uh, things which is happening for the case of uh, for the case of uh, the floating gate so floating gate transistor has four things first is the control gate next thing is also polysilicon if you look at from top it's again a polysilicon and thereafter there is a small area which is floating gate and after floating gate you have a small again polysilicon so because of two polysilicon right so uh,
so this is by the way known as ipd the name of this one is because it's inter poly dielectric okay i made a mistake it's not it's not polysilicon but poly gates are here right okay now other side is silicon so this is the difference between the normal transistor and uh, this one normal transistor had differently like only three different regions one two and three here there are actually one two three four and five where this is a substrate and these two are the gates one of one of them is control gate and one of them is floating gate we need to understand what is going to happen at particular voltage and how they are going to bind and how they are going to give you the values right so that is what going to be used in the case of floating gate and same is going to be used for the program read and maybe retention one more thing we need to understand whatever we are writing right now like this is very popular in uh, mostly all the mobiles or maybe you can say that uh, for the case of uh, photographs so if you are uh, having some pictures in your mobile phone or in your laptop so those uh, are saved and if there is a photograph you don't want that that photograph changes with time what i mean to say that that <coughs> in terms of reliability it's very important that it can save the value for some some uh, so many years like for 10 years or something like more than 10 years if it is in years then after one year maybe if you are looking at your photograph maybe like some of the pixels are uh, already gone and uh, you cannot read so such things are happening because of the case that they are not able to retain the value so it has to retain the value for more than like 10 years that is what expected uh, considering the <coughs> fact that people are going to change their mobile after 10 years or they are going to at least look at the uh, look at their photos for so many years and if you want for more time like you need to have uh, such kind of memories which can uh, remember for more years and that's why like nowadays a uh, uh, memory star is also coming into the picture if you know you know you know about memory star nandit okay so what is that memory star memory star it remains it retains its states okay registers with memory yeah you mtex do you know you heard about this one made one a pratiksha no sir no not yet so i suggest uh, you should read about it it's a new thing by the way memory star was on the way i can talk about it so there is a great gentleman you should remember him and you should not forget him the name is leon shua some people call it chua also but the correct pronunciation is uh, shua so leon shua or let's call just shua who have give theory on memory star almost in 1971 let me like you just check might be like uh, something in that particular time hmm? 71 uh, was the time when he started so 71 to 75 somewhere uh, in this time as suggested by Nandit so in this time he was working on his PhD thesis and his PhD thesis were memory stuff and he gave the mathematical things that how the memory star will look like or you can say that uh, what was happening you know if you is there anybody who is from instrumentation yes sir who is instrumentation make one are you instrumentation yes sir so do you know in a uh, mechanical quantity there are four important quantities are there do you know their name sir 
so mechanic mechanical physical quantities one is flow now sir, you, uh, flow, sir temperature okay pressure hmm? pressure pressure okay so these are the uh, fundamental four quantities other things are the derived one we don't care about this right so if you want to convert to flow to level level to pressure other things you can use it and you can use some sort of meters right so these four are the quantities other other quantities are also there but these are the those are the secondary and derived quantity which can't go here right so that is what like so i was thinking and he thought that uh, in electrically we have four fundamental quantities like current voltage charge and flux right so <clears throat> there are many meters are available which can convert one one form of energy to another form like resistance right r equal v equal to i r you know this the resistance can convert current to voltage voltage to resistance uh, voltage to current right you might have some other equation also are there like q equal to cv then many equations are there which are going to tell you the 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 relation between each other so current to charge is also there right dq by dt is equal to i but there is no equation between charge and flux right which can give you some meter so he thought about this one and he told that d5 by dq i am going to define new quantity with the capital m whose unit will be so now you can remember in forever shua right so unit of this m is a memristor which can it's a resistor but can remember the the things also so then and uh, of course the symbol look like this one this is the memristor symbol okay so that is what he told and uh, using that uh, if i am not wrong in 2007 some hp people i don't remember all of them but uh, they they got some papers in nature publication also like that's the based of all the publication right so and they published that they made the memristor with the fact that it was the fourth missing element so that was the title that fourth missing element memristor and with that they have published it and uh, for making that they have used titanium dioxide right two rods of titanium dioxide it can remembers the thing and there are lots of theory if you want to understand it's uh, also involvement of chemistry and physics right both together and uh, it's going into the next level of understanding of electronics in the regime called molecular molecular electronics right so that memristor came <coughs> still they are making it and none of the devices there but uh, there are lots of publications are coming which are known as shua's circuits or shua's memristor you can read about it maybe on google there are lots of things uh, are there but uh, unfortunately there are not books are uh, available because they have invented in 2007 and maybe this paper came in 2009 and like almost like it's a decade but uh, we haven't got the real memristor the hp uh, was thinking about to have the memory uh, and uh, they wanted to make free for memory with that so i don't know what happened after that but uh, you can uh, look at that and uh, you can find out what is happened to Uh, such kind of things right okay <clears throat> so maybe like tomorrow we'll talk about uh, how the floating gate will program the read and write but before that this was just a theory uh, 